Her story begins in the fall of 2020. Perhaps a handful of the coho salmon migrating back up our creek this November of 2023 began in the red that this female salmon was digging in 2020. The coho fry hatched, reared in our creek for about a year to 16 months, learned the creek's odors, ventured out to the ocean, gaining over 95% of their adult weight, and migrating perhaps as far north as southeast Alaska before returning to their natal stream. For the coho that escaped the myriad of river and ocean predators, once they entered back into the Columbia River on their return to our stream, they have altered their physiology to live in fresh instead of salt water, just the reverse of what they did about 18 months prior. It's about a 100-mile journey up to the Willamette River, then another 25 miles to the Clackamas River, followed by about 17 miles to Eagle Creek. During this time, they do not eat and live off of their fat and protein reserves. Once in Eagle Creek, their journey begins to get a little tougher. About five miles up Eagle Creek, they encounter a stepped eight-foot waterfall. Though passable by salmon and steelhead for millennia, humans lent a helping hand by building a fish ladder in 1957, located on the left. After surmounting this minor obstacle, it's another mile to the left turn where the North Fork Eagle Creek flows into Eagle Creek. By now, they have climbed about 500 feet over the course of about 148 miles since leaving the ocean. Another couple of miles and they come to our creek where the journey becomes even more arduous. They climb another 350 feet in less than a mile. This is a view of our creek's confluence with the North Fork Eagle Creek. Proceeding farther upstream, the creek is essentially a series of long cascades. They soon reach their toughest physical obstacle on their entire migratory journey, a six-foot-tall waterfall. The coho starts slowly, trying to figure out how to surmount the falls, seemingly peering out of the water and beginning with a series of incomplete and misdirected jumps. Most filming at the falls was done over a three-hour period on November 5, 2023. Adults, some up to 30 inches long, jacks and mini jacks, are all trying to negotiate this falls. This event is short, lasting only several days, with the bulk of activity in one day. Below the falls is a 12 foot wide by 25 foot long by 4 to 5 foot deep plunge pool, which affords the coho the right circumstances to energetically jump up the falls. Many begin with a series of small leaps, some to the left, some to the right, but mostly head on. Gradually, most coho leap to attain the height they need to surmount the turbulent falls. It's good to see these in slow motion as the feat is spectacular and lasting only a second. The salmon undulates its body to propel itself upwards while simultaneously taking advantage of the little rock steps and breaks in the strong current. Upstream of the falls is a long series of cascades. Coho still did not get a break. Prior to 2016, most fish would have been stopped here, only at half mile upstream of the falls at this fish blocking set of six foot diameter by 40 foot long culverts. But we fixed that by writing a grant to have a contract to remove these culverts and replace them with a bridge along our county road. The salmon can now access another five miles of our creek and get to the best spawning and rearing habitat in our 2600 acre watershed. The coho then navigate around or through the large wood structures we had constructed in the creek to mimic what nature may have done. There are over 25 log jams that add complexity to the stream flow and provide enhanced cover, rearing, and spawning habitat for the coho and other aquatic life. Beaver dams are not a problem and actually are a benefit to rearing coho fry. There are currently six on our place and the fish easily jump over them or, in this case, some use the spillway off to the right. Finally, after a couple of days, these wild coho have found what they've been looking for, the right gravels and hydraulic conditions. The female selects the red site and she performs most of the gravel digging and cleaning to ensure her eggs will be well oxygenated. The female is busily digging her red while the male waits. The male or buck is the more vibrant reddish color. He quivers or vibrates frequently, perhaps letting the hen know he is here and ready for action. It is not uncommon for other males to horn in and try to mate with her as well, but the dominant male will have nothing of this. Often multiple males, whether fully grown or jacks, will simultaneously mate with her if the timing is right. 
While the hen continues to dig her red, the buck fends off would-be interlopers, sometimes three or four at a time want to join in. Coho hens usually lay between 2,000 to 3,000 eggs. Spawning is not egalitarian. While studies are limited, it appears that only about 50% of the males sire offspring, whereas about 75% of the females do. However, the most successful males, only about 10%, produce half of the offspring and about 10 to 20% of the females similarly. This drives male competition to access females and provides females with the opportunity to choose which males to mate with. So, many try but not all succeed. Perhaps to maximize species success, we also have a separate late run of coho that migrates up in early December. Eggs are surrounded by a tough yet porous membrane that is strong enough to withstand the rigors of being buried in gravel and sand at the bottom of the creek, yet permeable enough to allow oxygen to enter and carbon dioxide and other waste to be flushed from the eggs as the embryo develops. At times, the dominant male gets carried away, chasing others far upstream while others sneak in to take advantage of his absence. Meanwhile, farther upstream, male salmon continue to fight, and injuries often result, as can be seen on the back of one of these males. Spawning occurred at the previous red. The female covered it with gravel and will continue to tend to it gently, undulating her body to oxygenate the water around her eggs and keep other salmon away. She will die in a couple of weeks. It's been another successful salmon run, as dozens of reds in our creek are being dug, and we hope that their progeny will enjoy the habitat we have provided in the cool waters to have some fry return as adults following their oceanic adventure in 2026. For those who would like to learn more, a good book for general readers is this one by Stokes. If you really want to dig into the behavior and ecology of salmon, this is an excellent textbook by Quinn. If you would like to explore our other fish habitat restoration and passage videos that describe some of the work we have completed over the years, please access our YouTube channel utilizing the QR code to the right.